Hi there, my name is Dave and in this video I will share with you three ways that you can draw an outline. So let's take a look and see if one suits you. The model I'll be using for these outline drawings is my beautiful great niece Renaya. First draw the vertical and horizontal lines, then outwards from that, two inch apart. The reason why I use a two inch grid instead of a one inch grid is because it helps with you learning to achieve a freehand method. Because that is the ultimate method really. Um, you don't want to get attached to the grid. The grid is just a guideline. You could use a one inch grid to start with and then up to two and then even three inch grid and then eventually you'll end up just doing freehand style. Right, to start with just loosely mark the area. You notice where I'm holding the pencil, about two or three inch from the tip. And this will give a, a, light, a light feel to it, a very loose feel. And then you can use the eraser to actually model the shape of the face. So it's a very, very great tool. I use the click one, which you'll see, see in the materials at the end of this video, or materials I'm using. So just don't forget to check that out at the end of the video. But yeah, so um, just a case of shaping it. Very, very loose, not too tight, not too strong. And then basically just feeling your way through. Oh, and the pencil is a HB because it's great for light marks. It's a good one to start with. Notice that I'm using the pencil horizontally and vertical. This is the same style as I would use in freehand method. So again, this bigger grid helps you to actually eventually be a freehand artist. But yeah, just checking the alignment with the image. So yeah, and then eventually show You'll see the mirror there. That was actually just checking through a mirror. That would help to actually gauge whether you've drawn it correctly. Because to see it in a different a flip of the image, it makes it amazing what you can actually see and pick up what you've done wrong. So I really suggest looking at a mirror. Now you can see I'm getting a little bit shorter on the pencil there, just a little bit, and uh, I'm getting a little bit tighter now with the actual detail. Again, using that eraser, it's a really great tool, that is just, you don't matter about how putting fine lines, you can just rub them fine. You could actually use a one inch grid to start with and then build up to a two inch and then three inch grid. So, you know, you could go for one inch to start with if you're finding the two inch a bit difficult to actually see where things are. Right, now I'm using the eraser to rub out the guidelines get rid of that grid and then it's a case of just relaxing and really feeling the energy of the subject and changing things don't be frightened of moving things about because that grid can be a crutch and you don't want to, it to be a crutch it feels horrible so just let go and be free with it don't be frightened of changing anything you've already done just go with the flow feel it and sense it your heart will tell you when it's right Right, the freehand method. 
This is my favourite method of all. First get the centre mark within your area of your image. Here I've placed a photograph within the size of my paper I'm using. So this is a 12 inch by 9 inch paper. And getting the centre mark. And then I made a centre mark in the centre of the paper and then work from that. But here just loosely ghosting the image in. You can hardly see it, but I can. You, you, you don't want to go too, too hard on this because you you want to be be able to change these marks. It's just really feeling the energy at this point, sensing it. You notice the ruler there that was actually just to uh, get the center correct and then work from the nose outwards. Like the previous method, using the pencil very lightly, just holding it about two inch away from the tip. And just basically just feeling your way through at this point, just sensing where everything is. Then you start to measure then um, and comparing with the image. So you're using your, you know, your vertical against horizontal marks. So you're comparing, you know, what the width of the face is to where it comes say on the bottom of the chin to the sort of where the eyes is so you, you've got to find these marks but you're comparing all the time and that's all it is really it's a really beautiful style this is you really feel a connection to the energy of the subject and all the time you're switching off the mind, you're keeping out of the way, you're just using the feeling of the body, the heart, just, just let it come from there. Don't let the mind say, oh God, I don't know what I'm doing, or because you start to panic. Just let it go, just, just flow with it. It doesn't matter if it's in the wrong place, you can always erase it and, sh and shift it. That's why these late light, light marks, using a HB pencil as well with these marks, so it's very light pencil. Basically, you're actually feeling the portrait, feeling the energy, moving. Somehow, the actual it feels it's in the right place. You get a feeling when it's not in the right place. You can feel it's not in the right place. It's strange. And you're just comparing all the time with the, the width against the, the, the depth, so width against the depth. Um, comparing with your image, with your drawing. Very, very light marks with HB pencil. Again, you can see I'm just measuring all the time using the razor. Not frightened to move things around. Don't get bogged down with thinking, oh, that's in the right place. I don't want to move it. Just move things. Just let it flow. You get a sense of the actual, even at this stage, the portrait comes alive. You can sense the energy of the person in it. That's why I like the freehand. It, it, from the very start, you, you're connecting to the soul of the subject. And don't worry that you might feel, oh, I just don't feel quite right. Because when you, we start putting in the blocking stage, everything can be moved again, you see. That's what's great about this method. Things move around. The blocking stage, which was going to be my next video, so be, be sure to actually subscribe so you don't miss that. Uh, and that will you'll see the difference then, how things can be moved and changed around.
I won't get too wrapped up in putting every little curly hair in there as well with the free hand because all that changes when we start putting the tones in there so <clears throat> just leave it as a rough marks really for the hair at the moment again comparing all the time to find where these marks are can't do too much comparing and comparing the comparison is the most important thing with the freehand method <clears throat> Even though you're doing the actual body, you're still going back into doing different areas and, and correcting it. You're looking at the whole thing as a whole, rather than just, you know, I'm just drawing the eye and that's it. You're always looking at the whole picture. Even though I just started doing the, the body there, I went back into doing other things. Uh, and then I'll go back to the body again later on. It, it's just a matter of actually keep moving around and getting everything feeling right. Oh yeah, this is the cross reference. Something I actually come across myself, just something I've played about with and I thought, well, oh, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll try and do that. Um, basically, putting the rules on the image in Photoshop or this is Elements. And then you've got the cursor. You can just see it at the corner of the eye now. And you place the corner there and then you've got marks on the side rules where you should measure. And then what you actually do then is go on to your paper and measure that area and put a mark. So you see me doing that now. Can be a bit tedious this method, um, but it's again it's a good way of learning to do freehand because you're doing a little mark freehand, little mark freehand. But you're getting used to seeing the image as that because it's, it's a very accurate way of drawing actually. But you see the image as that shape because when you're actually drawing from a freehand when you start because you've, you've seen light and shade you think the outline is a different shape to what it actually is so this is a good way of getting used to seeing the outline of an image uh, <clears throat> so yeah it's, it's a good one to adopt to, to, to learn to do freehand. All these methods eventually is to learn you to do freehand because that's the ultimate, really. See, it's very technical, but it's, it's very accurate as well. Um, it's not so loose. You notice where I'm using the pencils, not so the length of it is a bit shorter. <clears throat> but again, I just little mark and draw a bit, little mark and freehand a bit. Yeah, to start with, you can get a bit panicky with this method as well. You you you, you try and measure too many marks because you're frightened of doing the freehand part of it but just do a one mark as a key and and then just freehand it's more or less the same as what i would do if i was doing it from life you know you, you'd mark an area and then you freehand it then you'd mark it like thumb on your pencil and then do freehand again so it's a similar sort of thing but it's just a more technical way of doing it If you're familiar with my work on Instagram, uh, please take a look, by the way, if you don't know I'm there. It's uh, Dave Porter's Art. Just put that in the search and you'll find me. But all the images I did on the Stranger Things in pastels, they was all done in this method. So it's just basically keeping patience with this because it can be a bit tedious like I've mentioned. But just keeping patience, little mark and then freehand. And eventually you do more freehand than marks, but you know, just keep 
plodding on and don't get too frustrated with it. Because when we start doing the next stage, the blocking and the final details, you're not using any of that, you're just all using freestyle, freehand. So this is just your, your basic bones if you like. Notice I do a little mark, a lot of freehand. That's the way to go. Again, using the pencil very lightly, just about two or three inches away from the tip. Uh, <clears throat> HP pencil again, by the way. All these three outlines have been done with the HB pencil. which is ideal for this smooth paper. If I've not mentioned anything in the video, hopefully I will see that and I'll be writing everything in the description below. And I'll have all my links on there as well. So if you fancy having a look at me or the platforms, uh, I've got Instagram, Facebook, please follow me on there because it'd be great to hear from you. You can place comment. Please do that if you would. I'd appreciate the support. Here are the materials I use for graphite drawings. Oh, there's one more thing I do use, and that's a snap-off bladed knife, about nine millimeters wide, which is really good for sharpening your pencils. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more, please hit the subscribe button below and tap on the bell. This will remind you that I've uploaded a new video, therefore you won't miss what's next. Because this outline is going to be followed by a video with the blocking stage and then the final detail stage in the last video. So be sure not to miss that one. So hit the subscribe button below and we're there.